Welcome back to the Code Simulation chapter. In this video, we are going to introduce two parallel code simulation techniques. As we mentioned earlier, parallel simulation can speed up logic simulation. By using the same idea, we can exploit parallelism of logic bitwise operation to speed up code simulation. There are two types of parallelism. As early as 1965, Zetsu proposed a parallel force simulation in terms of force. It is called parallel force simulation at that time. Twenty years later, Dr. Wachikowski also proposed another parallelism in terms of patterns. They call it parallel pattern single fold propagation or PPSFP in short. In this video, we will introduce these two types of parallelism. First, parallel force simulation run parallel logic simulation with W minus 1 force in a word where W is the CPU word size. The first bit is reserved for fault free or good circuit simulation. The other W minus 1 bits are for faulty circuit. So we can speed up W minus 1 times compared with traditional serial fault simulation without fault dropping. Here is an example. Assume that W is equal to 3. So we have 3 bits for fault simulation. The first bit is reserved for good simulation. The second bit represents fault alpha. The third bit represents fault beta. In this circuit, assume that we apply pattern 1, 1. For the 40 circuit, the second bit here is changed to 0 because this bit represents alpha stuck at 0. And the third bit is flipped to 1 to present beta stuck at 1, 4. The output of this circuit is 1, 0, 1. The good output is 1. The 40 output with 4 alpha is 0. So 4 alpha is detected. While the 40 output with 4 beta is the same as the good output. So 4 beta is not detected. When we run parallel force simulation, we need to inject W minus 1 force into the circuit. So how can we inject the four? Assume that we want to inject an alpha stuck at 0, 4 to this circuit node. We can simply insert an imaginary end gate with a control input. When the control input is 0, the stuck at 0, 4 is injected. When the control input is 1, the 4 is not injected. By doing so, we can easily inject W minus 1, 4 into the parallel force simulation. Here is a simple quiz. Suppose we want to inject a stuck at 1, 4. What should we do? The answer is simple. We just simply change this gate to an OR gate where the control input 1 means that stuck at 1, 4 is injected. OK, let's revisit our motivating problem. Given this circuit, consider two faults. F is a stuck at 1, 4 and uh, 
port G is a stuck at 0, 4. Please use the parallel for simulation technique to apply three patterns. P1 is equal to 0, 1, 0, P2 is 0, 0, 1, and P3 is 1, 0, 0. Please find out the 40 response and the DMI which fault are detected. Please pause the video and work on this problem now. Okay, have you got it? The answers are written on the slide. The first pattern is 0, 1, 0. The first bit represents the good circuit. The second bit represents 4, F and the third bit represent port G. In the first pattern, we can see that this bit is flipped, so P1 detect 4F. Similarly, in P2, we can detect 4F. In the third pattern, we can detect 4G. Now, let's introduce PPSFP. PPSFP performs parallel simulation in terms of pattern because PPSFP assumes combinational circuit only. The procedure is like this. In the beginning, we run logic simulation on parallel patterns and we store the good output as OG and then we inject a 4 F1 by creating an event at the 4 side and we perform event driven simulation we obtain 40 output OF1 we compare the good output OG and the 40 output OF1 if they are the same the 4 is not detected if they are not the same, then the 4 is detected. And then in step 3, we create an event to undo the 4 effect of F1. At the same time, we inject an event for the next 4, F2. We repeat step 2 to 3 until all the 4 have been simulated. From this figure, we can see that we inject a 4F1 here in step 2 and we run the output response OF1. In step 3, we undo 4F1 and we inject 4F2. Because only one 4 is considered at a time, so we call it single 4 propagation. This slide shows a simple example. Suppose W is equal to 3, so we can run 3 patterns at a time. The first bit represents pattern 1, the second bit represents pattern 2, and the third bit represents pattern 3. This is a good circuit. We run parallel for simulation and we store the good output 1, 1, 1. Now we create one event to inject 4 alpha which is a stuck at 0, 4 here. The 4 effect is propagated all the way to the output. So the output here is 0, 1, 1. Compare with the good output, we know that 4 alpha is detected by pattern P1. Please note that because there is no event at input A, B, so there are shown in gray color. Now consider from the previous slide. Let's restore 4 alpha. So we create an event here and we inject another 4 beta stuck at 1. So we create a new event here. These two events are propagated to the output. Now the output is 1 1 1 because it is 
identical as the good output, so 4 beta is not detected. Now back to our motivating problem. Consider two faults. Fault F is a stack at 1 for here. Fault G is a stack at 0 for here. Please use PPSFP on the same patterns. P1 is 0, 1, 0. P2 is 0, 0, 1. P3 is 1, 0, 0. Please determine the 40 outputs and uh, which faults are detected. Please pause the video now. Now have you got the answers? In the first pattern, we apply three patterns together. The good output are 1, 1, 0. And then we create an event here to inject stuck at 1, 4 here. This event is propagate all the way to the output. We compare this with our good output. We know that pattern P1 and P2 detect F. And then we restore 4F and inject 4G. This event are propagate to the output. We get the output R111. Compare with the good output, we know that pattern 3 detects 4G. Here is the PPSFP low chart. Initially, big F is the collapse for list. We apply W patterns in parallel and obtain the good output OG. And then we get the next fault F from the four list. We remove the effect of last fault and we inject the new fault F. We obtain the 40 circuit output OF. We compare the response OF and the OG. If they are the same, the fault F is not detected. If they are not the same, the fault is detected. So we can remove for F from the four list. This is called four dropping. In this flow chart, the inner loop is a loop of faults, and the outer loop is a loop of patterns. So now we have learned three different fault simulation techniques. We can compare them in a two-dimensional table. In the table, every column represents a pattern and every row represents a fault. In serial fault simulation, we run one fault and one pattern at a time. Then we move on to the next pattern and the next pattern. After we finish all the patterns, we move on to the next four and etc. So this is a very slow process. In parallel four simulation, we pack W minus one fourth into a word. So we can run parallel simulation on multiple faults. After we finish this pattern, we then move on to the next pattern and then next pattern. For PPSFP, we pack W patterns into a word. After we finish fault F1, and then we move on to F2, and then to F3. From these three tables, we can see the difference among three fault simulation techniques. In summary, in this video, we have introduced parallel force simulation, which run parallel logic simulation for W minus 1 4 at the same time. Four injection can be done by circuit modification. PPSFP, on the other hand, is a parallel technique in terms of pattern 
We run parallel logic simulation for W patterns at the same time. At the end of this lecture, we have three problems for you to think about. Question number one. In parallel force simulation, we pack W minus one force into one word. Why don't we just pack all the W force into a word? This problem may sound trivial, but actually it has a very important concept about force simulation. So think about it carefully. Question number two. Please compare the pros and cons of parallel force simulation and the PPSFP. There are three criterions for you to think about. The first criterion is whether it's applicable for delay form model. The second criterion is whether they can be applicable to sequential circuit. And the third problem is the time to perform full dropping. Problem number three. PPSFP is useful for combinational circuit only. So how about sequential circuits? Please think about these problems. Thank you for watching.